Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be covering the build process for the TD1 project kit. The benefit of this device is that it will allow you to easily calculate the transmission distance and obtain the hex color code of all your filaments. And this is very beneficial if you're using a filament painting software like the Hue Forge. My goal in this video is just to show you how to build the kit. And if you want to learn more about this, I encourage you to check out the links in my video description. All right, let's get going. All of the files for the TD1 kit do come pre-configured in a 3MF file. I went ahead and opened that up in Bamboo Studio and printed it on my Bamboo Mini. And it turned out really good. I didn't really have to change anything other than the purge tower. I just removed that and I was good. Here are the completed printed parts. As you can see, they turned out really nice. I love the textured look and I also like the nice little multicolor part here. I use the PCB kit project guide for this. I did follow the guide pretty much exactly. I found the kit project guide to be very well written and very easy to follow. To do this project, you're gonna need the following components. Of course, the 3D printed parts. You need the TD1 kit and you also need some flush cutters. You'll need a good soldering iron. Flux is always helpful too. And of course, solder. I like to use this rosin core solder, 6040. I'm getting down to my last roll from Radio Shack, but this stuff's good if you can still find it. And once you're ready to screw things together, you're going to need an M3 driver. Be sure to check out my description for a link to the tools that I use or similar ones. First thing we're going to do is our screen. The first thing I'm going to do here is clip off these end pieces, but just take your flush cutters and just get them pretty much flush to the board, about like that. Make sure that your uh, header pins here are at a 90 degree angle, which they do look to be. If it's not, you can heat these joints up and you can kind of bend it. I'm gonna touch these up just to be on the safe side. I love using these helping hands from OmniFixo. I'll have a link to the description if you wanna use one like these. But I'm just gonna set it in there, take my soldering iron, and just kind of touch it up real quick. I'm just going to put a real fine layer on there. And I want to make sure that those are nice and shiny. There's no cold joints. And that looks pretty good. Now you are going to need to put on the spacer and I'll do that in a minute. But before I do that, I want to remove the screen. I've got my case and you want to hold it like this, orient it like that where the headers are going in this indentation and just set it in there. Flip it over and make sure you don't see any weird gaps here. That looks pretty good. And for the spacer, it's going to go right here on the end and it's going to be flush with the end of this. Make sure it's black as well. And you can use super glue. I like this E6000. It's a pretty flexible and it's also very thin. You know, you're not going to need very much of it. It's really, the goal is just to hold it in place. So and it doesn't even matter which side you glue on, but I'll glue on the textured side. Kind of coat it real good. The nice thing about this, it doesn't set very fast. It's going to give you a lot of time to set it in place. So I'll go ahead and set this right on the end like that. And then I'm going to push it down just a tiny bit. That looks good. And now, we're going to insert that assembly into here and it should fit. And here's the other side Again, no gaps that you can only see screen. Next up, I'm going to get my led board and I'm going to be doing these, this five pin header here. So open up your header bag. If you haven't already, here's the five pin header from the bag. And these are going to sit in here like that. Now the trick on these, you want to make sure that you're straight at a 90 degree angle and you're not bent like that. The way that I like to do that is just by setting these down for a second. I'm only gonna solder one pin initially and I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little wonky and that's okay. So I've got that in there, that's gonna hold it in place. Now what I do is I just take my hand and what I'm gonna do is make sure this is 90 degrees. Apply a little heat and get it where I want it. That's still a little off. Apply a little more heat and just kind of orient it straight. It's still a tad bit off, so let's just keep looking at it. There we go. Make sure that it's all the way down as well. You don't want any gaps. You also don't want so much solder 
that you've got solder building up under here. So you only want to put a little bit of solder on that. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. Just make sure you don't have any cold joints. You want those to be nice and shiny. You don't want any bridges in between, meaning that none of the solder should be touching the other pin. There we go. That one touched a little bit. So if that does happen, you can use what I like to use, which is a solder sucker. And you just come in here, heat it up, and then pull that excess solder away. There we go. So you want to make sure that everything looks like that. That's pretty good. So I like to describe these as little mini volcanoes or mini Hershey Kisses. If you've got a little extra solder on one of the legs, you can just kind of do that and fling it off. You don't want to see lollipops here. All right, this is going to be going into here, but before we can set it in here, we need to trim these leads here. This isn't really explicitly mentioned in the instructions, but it's the only way that's going to fit. So we'll go ahead and trim these guys. Once again, use eye protection when you're doing this. I'd recommend doing them one or two at a time too. And these should be cut pretty short. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to just go ahead and set this in. And it should just fit straight in like that. You are going to need to cut these as well. So we're gonna, this is going to be a little challenging, but we're going to we're going to go ahead and solder first. Make sure when you're doing this everything stays in place. That header should ensure you've got a good fit. I'm trying to keep it flat when you're when you solder this first one because if you get this off it's going to be really hard if you solder all four so that looks about right make sure this is kind of parallel to your to the edge of your box if it's not then just adjust it by heating this up and adjusting the board like I showed earlier so I'm going to go ahead and finish these up And you don't really need a ton of solder on this. Hopefully you can see that okay. You, once again, you want to make sure these are little mini volcanoes. You don't want lollipops. So now I'm going to cut these flush. I recommend cutting from this side, but you want to get them as close to the board as you can. Once again, eye protection. We may have to take a couple passes on these. As long as they're about or below the height of the LEDs, I think you're fine. When you're cutting, just be sure not to damage these components. So that's pretty flush to the board. It's not com completely flush, but just try to get it as good as you can. I think that's pretty good. Again, make sure everything is still parallel to the board. Your screen is looking good. We'll move on to the next step. Next up, we're going to need these two boards, the color sensor and the Lux. We're going to be soldering the headers to these. I went ahead and prepared the header pins. Make sure it's oriented like this. So the longer ends are on this side with the, the lettering. This other side, the shorter ends for the Lux piece. The color sensor piece, so long ends on this side, short ends on this side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tack one pin. We'll start with this piece and we'll make sure it's 90 degrees and then we'll solder the rest. And to solder this piece, I'm going to just set it on my table like such. I'm not going to worry about the 90s until after I solder the first pin. Okay, I've got that first pin done. You can see it's a little bent. So I'm going to take it while I can see it and just one pin's there. All right, that looks pretty good. You can see it's a nice little 90 degrees. I'll just go ahead and put this in here and finish up the soldering. This is how you want it to look. And next up, I'm just going to repeat for this piece, the color sensor into place. There we go. And then just make sure it's not quite 90. 
So we're just going to adjust this like we've been doing all along. So once you're happy and it's a 90 degree angle, just go ahead and finish up the, the rest of these. I've got one joint here that's got a little more of a lollipop. So I'm gonna fix that one. You don't want that. That can that's basically a cold joint. And if you've got a little too much solder, feel free to solder suck it off. If you got a little too if you've got too little, just add a little bit more. You don't need a ton on these, but I do like to see the copper pads completely covered. There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. Got a little more solder than I probably need on that one, but it's not going to hurt anything. Now I'm going to take those two pieces I just completed, place them in here at this orientation. Then we're going to secure them with these little holes for the filament. And I've got four pieces of filament cut. I'm just inserting it in here as far as it'll go. It doesn't really matter what kind of filament you use. I'm just using a PLA, but you may want to use something a little bit stronger so it doesn't break but this is pretty good PLA. But just repeat that for all four holes. And I've got all four in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim these. It's a pretty cool little design, I like that. So those are, those are all staying in place, nice and firm. Okay, this is a very important step. We're gonna go ahead and set the ball in there and then we're gonna set this piece aside. Next up, we're gonna be soldering JP1 and JP5. And this is the same process we've used before. And just confirm that it's nice and 90 degrees. Everything is seated onto the board. And then we're gonna go ahead and solder the remainder. Now, if you don't have flux in your solder, like a rosin core like I do, you can also use flux paste on these to make it a little bit easier for the for the heat to transfer. I don't typically do it when I'm using when I'm doing pin headers, but it can be helpful especially if you don't have a good soldering iron or one that gets quite hot enough like this one does. There you go. It's all look good. Now flip the board over from the side we just soldered and you should see the button and we're going to place this on top for JP5 and just repeat solder into place, and then get your 90 degree angle. Looks good. At this point, we're ready to install this board we just soldered. Make sure you've got your metal ball in here because if you solder this on without the metal ball, it's gonna be really difficult because these pins, once you solder them, are, are hard to remove can be done, but it's very difficult. This only fits one way, so just line it up, and it should look like that. And again, double check that your ball's in there. It's all nice and snug. And then we're gonna go ahead and just solder this up. I'm gonna solder it from the middle first, just to keep it at the right angle. You don't want to set your soldering iron on here for too long because you can lift the pad if you do that. So no longer than what I'm showing here. My soldering iron's about 330 degrees C, which is plenty of heat for small soldering like this. Okay, and this is what it should look like when you're done. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and install these M3 screws. There should be two of them in your bag. And just take your M3 driver. And they should just go right in. It, it may take a little bit of force to get them in, which is fine. And I'm going to go in a little bit more than that, but I want to get this other one in first. The instructions say to go all the way to the PCB. I'll get this one in there as well. Okay, I think I've got it good. I can kind of hear a little bit of a click. And then just test that your filament is able to go all the way through as well 
which mine is, but it's it's kind of hard. So if, if it is hard, just use a tool like this. And you can kind of just file it out a little bit. And next up, I'm going to take my top case here. I'm going to take this piece and we're going to align it so that these pins go into here. And just make sure that everything stays good here. And it should just pop right in like that. Make sure your screen is still aligned. If it's not, go ahead and adjust it at this point. So that looks pretty good. Now, in order to secure everything, we're going to use our filament and then poke them through these holes. Okay, I've got the first one through. Flush, cut that flush. And then we'll just repeat. You may have to push down a little bit to get these in, which, which is what I had to do. I'll do the middle one last. Everything went in pretty well. If you're having a hard time with these, you might have to clean out your holes a little bit. The last piece up is the Raspberry Pi 2040 Zero. And then we're going to solder up these headers. And you're going to want your headers oriented like this, where you've got USB on top. You've got the female headers here. My usual technique. Just go ahead and solder one of them. Okay. Okay, I've got that in my helping hands. Now I will just do what I usually do. See the nice little Hershey Kiss style joints. And now we're going to go ahead and trim these eye protection. There we go, and you can see the result there. That looks pretty good. Now that we've got that done, we can install him into this base, and it should fit nice and flush, which it does. You should have access to your USB-C, and there's actually a little hole over here to stuff some filament in. Okay, I went ahead and trimmed down my filament, so I'll have a better chance at getting it in. I'm going to use a pair of pliers. There we go. And you can just leave it like that. You don't have to worry about trimming it. I well, might as well I'll trim it a little bit here. Good enough. Now that I've got that in, all I've got left to do here is align this. I want to double check. These things need to be very flush. These filament guys here. So make sure those are trimmed. I think that's good lines up here in the corner and you'll know if you can fit it or not all right now see how that's aligned just give her a good push there we go now we're going to power it up and see what happens okay here's the moment of truth huh. there we go Insert filament. All right, let's try that. Okay, I'm going to try this out with some prusament, and I'm going to use it on the side where there's an arrow. I'm going to try to fit it all the way through. See what happens here. Hey, look at there. TD 4.6 hex code. I can't really see that. 083. 208. All right. Well, I would say this was a success. Very cool. Overall, this was a really good project. This kit's only about $40 if you buy it through West3D, which I would recommend. There's also other suppliers. If you'd rather self-source this, you can do that as well. If the project looks like it's a little more challenging than what you take on, you can also buy this pre-assembled for about $80. This kit was not overly difficult. Uh, hopefully the video gives you a flavor for just the level of effort required to assemble something like this as well as the skills. If you've never done soldering before, it might take you a few hours. I hope this video has been helpful and I'm looking forward to using this with my Hue Forge and I encourage you to check out the Hue Forge if you haven't already. This is really going to make using any filament that you want that may not be in the Hue Forge library. It's going to make it very easy to get going and make sure that you have accurate colors represented when you're doing your filament painting. Thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.